Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna compare these mesh Wi-Fi systems to each other. I've done independent reviews on each one of these. I will put links in the description below. I'll also put product links down there as well. And while you're down there, hit that subscribe button. Don't worry, I'll wait. All right, let's continue. Before we begin, my internet speeds are rated for 400 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. I do get faster than that. I usually get 480 megabits per second download and 24 megabits per second upload. So my ISP underrates it a little bit. But an important thing to note, no matter which mesh Wi-Fi system you get, in terms of internet speeds, you're limited to what your modem is providing you. So just because, let's say, I get the Euro Pro 6 and it can handle internet speeds of up to a gigabit, doesn't actually mean I'm gonna get that unless if I'm actually paying for that service and the modem is actually providing it to me. Now, I've used the iPhone 12 Pro, which is a Wi-Fi 6 device for the speed test and the range test. I've also done speed and range tests on the Pixel 5 for a wireless AC or Wi-Fi 5 device. Now, starting off with the Nest Wi-Fi, this thing starts at $169 for the Nest Wi-Fi router if you get two they retail for 299 bucks. I see them on sale all the time. And then depending on which combo you get, the prices do vary quite a lot. I will put product links in the description below. Okay, in terms of ports, you get two ports with the Nest Wi-Fi router. They're dedicated ports, meaning you have to hook up the globe side to your modem and then the arrow side you can hook up to another one or to a switch if you want more ethernet ports. The Nest Wi-Fi point doesn't have any ethernet ports, so you have to pretty much hook it up to the Nest Wi-Fi router via wireless. Now, like I said with that, you can hook up the two Nest Wi-Fi routers via wireless or you can hook them up via Ethernet. If you can do it via Ethernet, I highly recommend that because that's going to give you a more consistent, better speeds. The best possible speeds is actually going to be if you wire them to each other. And that's called wired backhaul or Ethernet backhaul when you wire them to each other via an ethernet cable. Now, when we look at the speed test, the speed tests also matter if you're a dual band or a tri-band router. Now, the Nest Wi-Fi is a dual band router, and I do have to say that the Nest Wi-Fi is the only mesh Wi-Fi system that's wireless AC or Wi-Fi 5, so it doesn't have the latest in the wireless standards, which is Wi-Fi 6 or wireless AX. Now, the, all, the rest of them are actually all Wi-Fi AX devices, except the Nest Wi-Fi, which is wireless AC. Now, jumping into speed test, when you're hooked up via Ethernet backhaul, you get full speeds. If you're hooked up via wireless, your speeds get cut by a little more than half. In terms of range tests, it pretty much goes up to 60 feet or 18.3 meters away, which was outside my front door with my front door closed. Now, I do have to mention this, Range really depends on your location. It really makes a huge difference where you are. Um, it depends how many walls you have. So all of that attributes to range. So at my parents' place, who also have the Nest Wi-Fi, they actually get much farther away. Uh, you can actually go much farther away and still get really good speeds. Whereas my place, there's a whole bunch of walls around, so I actually get less range. The reason why I'm saying the range is because all of these mesh Wi-Fi systems were tested in the same exact spot with the same exact devices, with the same exact distances and stuff. So it's relatively, it gives you an answer of which one actually does better in terms of range. Moving on to the TP-Link Deco X60, it retails for $269 for a two pack. They also have a three pack variant. In terms of ports, they both have two ports and they're auto sensing, meaning you can hook up the first one to your modem if you want or the second one will automatically detect it. If you want more ethernet ports, hook it up to a switch. Now, just like with the Nest Wi-Fi, this is true for all of them. You can hook them up to each other via wireless or via ethernet. If you can hook them up via ethernet, I recommend that because that's gonna give you the best possible speeds. Again, that's called wired backhaul or ethernet backhaul. Now, when we look at the speed test, because this is a dual band system, when they're hooked up via ethernet, you get full speeds. When they're hooked up via wireless, the speeds are actually cut, um, but not quite as much as with the Nest Wi-Fi. So this actually did very well uh, for a dual band system, which surprised me. Also in terms of range test, this also went up to basically 70 feet or 21.3 meters away, which also was very impressive. And it also has a really good app that's very responsive. 
Time for the Eero 6. So the Eero 6 router retails for 129 bucks. Granted, it does go on sale. They also have a combo that comes with the Eero 6 router and the Eero 6 extender, which I believe is 199 bucks. Okay, so the Eero 6 router comes with two auto sensing ports. Uh, so meaning it doesn't matter which one you use, just like the TP-Link, you could hook up any one you want to your modem, the other one to a switch if you want more ports, or hook it up to this guy if you want wired backhaul. Or you can hook up two Eero 6 routers via wireless. Or if you get an Eero 6 extender, you can hook them up to each other via wireless. You cannot hook them up via Ethernet because the Eero 6 extender doesn't have any Ethernet ports. In terms of the app, the app works well. There was, there was an issue that I noticed is if sometimes when you have them hooked up via wired backhaul, it still thinks it's wireless backhaul. Granted, the speeds you're getting are wired backhaul speeds, but uh, sometimes in the app it doesn't actually, it still says wireless even though it's wired connected, so there was a little bit of a software bug there. There are dual band systems. In terms of speed tests, when they're hooked up via wired backhaul, which is via Ethernet, you got full speeds, which is what I expected. But when they were hooked up via wireless, the speeds got cut by a little more than half. In terms of range test, this was actually the least, uh, it had the least amount of range from all the mesh Wi-Fi systems I've tested. Moving on to the Eero Pro 6, which retails for 229 bucks individually. The two pack is 399 bucks. They also have a three pack version so it has two auto sensing ports, just like the Eero 6, so it doesn't matter which one you connect it to, it'll automatically detect it. If you want more Ethernet ports, use it. Switch. In terms of the app, it's using the same exact app, the Eero app, just like you did with the Eero 6. In terms of connections, obviously you could do wireless backhaul, or you could do wired backhaul, which is via Ethernet. The cool thing is, because this is a tri-band, you actually get a dedicated band for your wireless and here's when things start to make a difference for your wireless connections moving to the speed test now on wired backhaul i got full speeds i also got full speeds on wireless backhaul with the wi-fi 6 device and got very good speeds with the wi-fi 5 device in terms of range this took the cake this one went the farthest and had the best speeds at the farthest range. So it went 70 feet or 21.3 meters and it still had decent speeds at that range which was very impressive. Moving to the Netgear Orbi. So this is the RBK752 model and it retails for $449. But you get two of these. You get one router and you get one satellite. Now with the router, you actually get a dedicated WAN port and you get three other ports that you can use. Uh, if you have faster than gigabit internet speeds, you actually have to use two of these ports. Uh, so then you'll only have two left. But in most cases, most people will have three ports available. The satellite, which is your access point essentially, gets two ports to use. Now in terms of the app, it's very responsive. Everything's good to go there. In terms of the band, this is a tri-band router like the Eero Pro 6, so you're going to get really good wireless speeds. Uh, but I always recommend going Ethernet backhaul if you have the choice. Now in terms of speed test, the Orbi took the cake because no matter if you were a Wi-Fi 6 device, a Wi-Fi 5 device, if you were connected wireless or wired, I pretty much got full speeds throughout in terms of my internet speeds. So very, very impressive, full speeds throughout. In terms of range, it got almost as far as the Eero Pro 6. I mean, it did get 70 feet or 21.3 meters, but it was a little bit slower at those speeds. So uh, not quite as good as the Eero Pro 6, but very close to it. All right, before I pick the winners, which are best bang for your buck and best overall winner, I have to say that honestly, they're all really good. The reason why I say that is because for real world usage, if you're on a Wi-Fi device and you're walking throughout your place, you're watching YouTube or you're on Netflix or whatever, you expect it not to buffer or disconnect or anything like that. Which with none of these, again that also depends on your internet speed, uh, but with none of these in my place, it doesn't buffer. Like it's all like very instant, very responsive. I walked around my place, it doesn't lag like, oh it's switching to the other guy, oh there's a pause there, no. None of these had that issue. So 
There's not any mesh Wi-Fi system that I could say, you know what, avoid that. And sometimes they go on sale, sometimes they're different prices, so you know, all of that can change. But I do have to say that best bang for your buck goes to the TP-Link Deco X60. The reason why is because for the price, you're getting really good range, you're getting really good speeds, especially for a dual band when it's wirelessly connected. You're getting an easy to use app that includes a lot of features like parental controls and you get antivirus and stuff that might not be important to some people, might be important to others, but it's nice that it's there and it's included. And you're also getting an easy to use app and it has the latest in wireless standards, which is Wi-Fi 6. So best bang for your buck, TP-Link. Best overall winner was a little bit harder to pick because honestly, it's very, very close between the Eero Pro 6 and the Netgear Orbi. The reason why is because this one, the Eero Pro 6 gives you the best coverage and the Orbi gives you the best overall speeds no matter which device you're using. But if I had to pick a winner, which I do, I have to give it to the Orbi. The reason why is because when I think of a mesh Wi-Fi system or a router, I'm basically thinking of something that's secure and something that's fast. And I think because, I mean all of these are pretty much secure, but because this thing is also consistently fast, whether it's wirelessly connected or wired, I think the Orbi takes the cake. And the other cool thing about the Orbi is you get extra ethernet ports, which is not true for any one of the other ones. So you could probably get away without using a switch, at least on this side. Um, granted, you could use a switch. Even from the other side, you could hook up a switch to this and you can expand your ports, which is true for the rest of them as well. Anyways, but honestly, it was a tough decision because I also really like the Euro Pro 6. But let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. As always, thank you guys for watching. Uh, which, which mesh Wi-Fi system do you guys like? And hit that subscribe button if you guys did enjoy this video and like it as well. Thank you guys for watching and thank you to all my current subscribers.